You know, ever since Monmouth came into the league, we've developed a very good rivalry with Monmouth. It's, uh, it's, it's been a big game for us, it's been a big game for them. Their fans have always turned out, our fans have always turned out, so I'm expecting more of the same this evening. It's, we've had some great games over the years, it's come down to the last minute or two of every game it seems like, and uh, I expect that tonight's game to be exactly the same. It's been a lot of great games. Uh... I've been here 22 years now. My freshman year, we lost to them in the NEC Championship game right on this floor. Uh, three years ago, we won uh, with a Chris Kenny layup for two seconds left to go to the NCAA tournament right on this floor. Uh, we've had games that have gone overtime, double overtime, triple overtime, and believe it or not, even four overtime. So uh, I just remember a lot of great games. They always seem to come down to the wire and uh, a lot of exciting play. One of the best and most intense rivalries in the NEC continues as Fairleigh Dickinson and Monmouth share their court once again. Next. Oh, into the paint, then you get the looks. There it is. Eric Moore for three. Didn't get it that time, and the putback goes, and the foul. Camille Zavertle, they just they have talent but haven't really gotten it together yet. There's a three ball from Alex Nunner. Oh, good look inside to Moklananya from Cameron Tyler. Excellent job going up, thinking shot, but then saw the opening of and his partner Moklananya down low when he made the delivery. Simpson to Taylor for the jam. And then they'll go with the cutters. That's what causes all the confusion. Terrence Greer off balance. What a shot. And the long three from Cameron Tyler. Got a good balance game going right now. This Tyler's got seven points, three assists, five rebounds. Nice runner from Yaniv Simpson, the junior. Now, sometimes even in the half court, you can change tempo by your attitude. Good pass. Sverdlik takes the punishment and hits the shot. Oh, I was just getting ready to say a man's got to know his limitations, and then he knocked it down. <laughs> FDU with their largest lead until that. A three-pointer from Alex Nunner. Trimmed out. Tyler to Baptiste on the move. Excellent job. Under control was Tyler that time to set up Baptiste. Going on. Simpson, 4-3. Yaniv Simpson, who shoots 43% from downtown. Nunner finds Taylor. He's the one big for Monmouth, and Taylor has been great. Taking their time, working some clock. Five on the shot clock for Cameron Tyler. First for Eric Moore. It's 64-55 over the Monmouth Hawks, and Keith Irizarry is standing by with the victors. Big win for Fairleigh Dickinson today. Tom Green to my left, and I'll turn to Camille's Verdlick first. And Camille, great game for you, 16 points, and this was a really important victory for you guys. Uh, it was a really good victory because we have a lot of losses in a row, so we had to win some game, and we are lucky that it was this win. At home, with the television, it's nice. So it's really important. All right, I mentioned your 16 points, but the defensive side of things today for your team really seemed to do a very good job. Yeah, because we practiced a lot last week, the defense, and we tried to eliminate the mistakes from the, the last games. So I think we did a good job today. All right. all right, Camille, thank you very much. Thank good luck you. the rest of the way, all right? Camille's Verdlick, 16 points, and now I turn to Coach Tom Green. And Coach, we, we spoke earlier this week, and uh, you mentioned a lot about your defensive intensity. Were you happy with that today? Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, the, the, the Taylor kid gave some problems down low for sure, but I thought we did a decent job of covering up. Simpson got some threes that we didn't want him to shoot. We knew he was an outstanding outside shooter, but for the rest of the team, I thought we played him pretty smartly, and, uh, you know, the intensity level was definitely there for sure. First game back in a while for John Galvin. He looked pretty good. Yeah, he did. Uh, he, he missed about uh, eight or nine days of practice, and uh, he practiced Friday. He was a little bit sore, and we didn't play him Saturday up at Bryant, but uh, came back Sunday, had a good practice yesterday, and you know he was ready to play tonight. I thought he did a very good job for us tonight. Third conference victory right now. It was obviously a very important victory for you guys. Where do you rate this for this season? Well, you know, it was important for us to get back towards the middle of the pack. A loss would have knocked us down towards the bottom of the pack. We'd have been in 10th place with a loss, but now there's uh, three or four teams that have four losses. So hopefully it just brings us a little bit closer to, to the middle of the pack right now. Start, start of a home uh, home stand for you. How important was it to get that first victory? Oh, real, real important for sure. Uh, just, 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 just getting back into winning ways for sure is important for us. And you know, you you, you got to take care of your home court for sure. So uh, d definitely an important win for us. Coach, thank you very much, and good luck the rest of the way. Well, tonight's NEC Scholar athletes are outstanding soccer players. Alessandra Detata, 
of Monmouth and Rachel Derrico of FDU. Tatana, a business administration major, has been on the NEC academic honor roll twice, while Derrico, a communications major, has a 3.82 ERA. Congratulations for holding court in its 10th season with our affable arbiter, Tim Capstraw. Tim Capstraw holding court today with Terrence Greer of Fairleigh Dickinson University. Terrence, I know you're a, a transfer uh, from the University of Rhode Island, and I know you had pretty good reasons why you transferred. Tell us about it. Um, well, once again, thanks to for this for this um, opportunity. Honestly, when I left Rhode Island, um, I, I really left my family was the main reason why I came back home. Um, basketball was great, the atmosphere up there was great, but I just feel as if that um, my family could come to watch the games. I'm from New Jersey, you know, I grew up in Cranford, New Jersey. This is 30 minutes from my house, and what's better than coming back home every day? So, yeah, I got you. they come watch the games, that's, that's basically the main reason why I transferred. Well, it's a very special day here in, in uh, playing basketball, and it, but it's Martin Luther King Day. And, and uh, how about just expressing some of your feelings about uh, how special a day this is? Honestly, like, this is 2009, Martin Luther King Day. Um, tomorrow's inauguration for um, Barack Obama. Just the whole fact of change and just, you know, he had a dream. And this is, honestly, for my culture, this is a big day in American history. So, you know, I just, this is a good, big game, you know. This is a big game, too. A big game, yeah, it's a big, big game, day. big day. So, you know, it's, just a, it's a great day in history for us. How about when Barack Obama was elected president? And when, and when that election came, uh, tell, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that feeling. Honestly, you know, I was at home actually with my parents and just to see the feeling in their face, they were so they were so happy and everyone was just so happy that, you know, finally we have a black president, you know, me being an African American myself, you know, it's just, I, I know that I could do anything, you know, God willing, if he could do it, then I could do it. Yeah, that, that is so important. <laughs> How about Monmouth University, huh? Something a little bit special when <laughs> Fairleigh Dickinson and Monmouth go head to head. You know, this is another reason, you know, Fairleigh Dickinson and Monmouth, this is the New Jersey rival. You know, this is a good team. Mom has a good coach, and um, we also have a good coach. Coach Tom Green's been been in, he's been here for a while. You know, so when those two teams go at it, it's definitely going to be war. It's going to be war right here in Teaneck tonight. <laughs> well, how about you know, Fairleigh Dickinson has an unbelievably outstanding basketball tradition under Tom Green. There's no doubt. But you guys have struggled. What is it going to take for this team to turn it around? Well, you know, this is the first year that we all playing together. You know, me and myself also with two transfers, Eric Moore and Alvin Morfianya. Um, we both came, we all came in thinking that, you know, we were going to help the program around. We, we, we've been struggling along the way. But, you know, that's what, that's what happens. That's when um, things happen, you know, it's bumps in the road. It's obstacles that we have to overcome. So um, tonight, hopefully, we could just help we just turn this around. And um, the atmosphere, when the people are here, you know, we could get this thing going. Ah, it's a great job, Terrence. <laughs> it's Tim Capstra and Courts Adjourned. Thank you. Tim hitting on some serious subject matter tonight. Look for him on 60 Minutes next.